So recently I bought this, which is a, well, on AliExpress, it's called a flash chip test clip socket adapter BIOS programmer. Uh, but basically what it is, it's a clamp that you can clamp onto a, a SOIC 8 or a SOP 8 chip. And then the pins are broken out on here. And it comes with this, which is a breakout board, which you can then plug in the cable. And I'm using the, the colored cable as pin one. That's easy to remember. And then this plugs into a breadboard. But here's my problem. When I plug this into a breadboard, it does fit. Now there's no place for me to hook up my breadboard wires. So this is a bit useless in this form. Now, I also bought this. It's a Micro Pro AVR Arduino Tiny ISP. And this also has all the pins you need. Ground, V+, MOSI, MISO, reset, and clock. But there's a problem with this cable, which is that normally on a chip, the pins go counterclockwise. So it's pin one, pin two, pin three, four, and well, five, six, and then seven, eight, nine, ten in this case. But it doesn't. Because if you look closely at the other side, for example, if we take pin one to be the colored wire, that does go to pin one over there. But the second wire in the strand doesn't go to pin two, but goes to pin eight instead. So the numbering on this side is not the same as it is in this side, because on this connector, it goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, etc. So what I was thinking is maybe I can come up with some kind of adapter which doesn't use this thing, but connect directly to this tiny ISP. So the reason I still want to be able to plug this in and out of something is because this also can be used for other chips than an AT Tiny. For example, let's say uh, there are some SOP8 chips that only come in SOP8 and not in DIP8, uh, but you still want to use it on a breadboard. Now you can just clamp on the chip and use this to your breadboard. But then I thought, well, these things are only like $2 on AliExpress. So why not just sacrifice one of these and solder the wires directly to the tiny ISP and just have one dedicated programmer and just order another one if I want to use it on any other chip than an AT Tiny. So that's what I'm gonna do. So I've turned on some extra light, I zoomed in a bit, and while the soldering iron is warming up, Let's just uh, cut this off. After this, there's no way back. There we go. This is very fine wire. So let's see how easy it is to strip this with my generic cheapo strippers. First have to just get one wire out of the strand, which is pretty difficult. Don't have any nails. There we go, that's one. Let's see if we can strip this. Well, that works. So this is another problem I'm having with these strippers, is if you look closely, they leave kind of a dent in the wire. So it doesn't affect the wire at all, but it doesn't look very nice, does it? Oh, by the way, uh, I hacked off a bit of nail with uh, an axe. I was chopping some wood and I couldn't find a smaller axe, so I used a larger axe and that was a bit sharper than I thought. And I, uh, well, this happened. Anyway, let's get some blue tack, which again in the Netherlands is, is white some reason and it's a bit different than blue tack um i've used blue tack before this is white tack um 
and it's a bit more sticky for some reason. Uh, if you live in the Netherlands, uh, you can buy this uh, at, well, any office supply store and it's uh, Prit, P-R-I-T-T. -T. If you live in the Netherlands, you know what a Prit stift is and uh, they are the same suppliers. So I'm just gonna strip all of them first. I'm gonna break out each strand or strand. It's not actually a strand, it's an individual wire. There we go. And there's one that is a bit spread out. So I'm just gonna put the strands a bit closer together so they will fit through the hole. And I'll have one strand sticking out and doesn't want to go. So these are all tinned. Good enough. And now the challenge of figuring out which one's which. Um, let me just grab a pen and paper. So the pins on this 80 tiny, uh, this is an 80 tiny 85, but every 80 tiny in a SOP 8 package uh, has the same pin out, which is the same as a uh, dip 8. The pin out is pin one is where the marking is, pin two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Pin one, that's reset. Pin four, that's ground. Pin five, move him out of the way, is Mosey. Pin six is Miso. Pin eight is the clock. Uh, excuse me, pin seven is the clock and pin eight is VCC. So now I have to figure out which one of these strands goes to which of the pins on the clamp. And the way I'm gonna do that is just by following the strand and just looking at the clamp and seeing to which pin it goes. So I'm gonna write that down and then we'll get to the soldering of the tiny ISP. So that took a bit of figuring out, but here it is. Wire one goes to reset, wire two, which is this one, goes to VCC, then wire three is not connected. Uh, well, it, it's connected, of course, but it's not used. Uh, wire four is going to the clock. Wire five is again, not used. Uh, wire six goes to MISO. Wire seven goes to ground. And wire eight goes to MOSI. So let's keep this where I can see it. And let's start soldering. So here we go, all soldered up. Now the real test is if I can program an 80 tiny 85 with this. Now I could just clamp on an 80 tiny 85, but then I have no idea whether it's actually working. And uh, I do have an 80 tiny 85, which is on a PCB, uh, thanks to Sion, the unexpected maker. So I'm gonna try and program it using this clamp. Currently it's just using five volt and ground of uh, out of a breadboard. So I'm gonna connect the clamp and connect the ISP to my computer and see what happens. Now I'm wondering how easy it is to clamp this on with the headers in place, but I'll have a go. So pin one, that's on this side over here and on the 80 tiny 85, it's this pin. So that should be it. It's kind of difficult to do this on camera and it's kind of difficult to see whether it's actually clamped on properly. But the only way we can tell 
is by plugging this into my computer. So, no smoke, that's a good sign. Just let me grab some white tack again to hold it in place. There we go. And also to hold the strip in place. There you go. So I've opened up Arduino and now under tools, I have to select the board, which is an AT Tiny 85. And the processor is also AT Tiny 85. The clock is internal eight megahertz. Now this already has a bootloader on it, so I don't have to burn the bootloader. Um, but under programmer, I have to select USB Tiny ESP. ISP and after that I have to change two settings which is the pin number which is pin 0 and the number of LEDs which is 10 now to see whether it actually uploads a new piece of code instead of just running the code that's already on there I'm just gonna modify the loop a bit and only do the color wipe and in the color red at 50% brightness. So let's check again. Everything's correctly set. Upload. And there it is. It says it's done and the color is just red now at 50% brightness. Well, I'm happy with this. Uh, this tiny ISP and this cable, that's just gonna be my dedicated 80 tiny programmer and for other chips I'm just gonna use another cable in fact I'm gonna buy a few more of these and just have dedicated programmers for everything thank you for watching have a great day and see you next time bye bye